Hello everyone. Today is October 22nd, 2020. I'm Mark Cook. I'm the CEO of Shiny Shoe. We are the creators of Monster Train and welcome to another developer stream. Today we have some awesome news. We are launching our Herzl's workshop update, which has this sweet key art, uh, which adds official mod support. Um, in addition to a number of other kind of smaller changes, uh, we've also done some stuff for Halloween that's a part of this update. The Halloween changes are temporary. Um, really the focus is on mod support and official Steam Workshop integration really. Uh, and there's also some balance tweaks and so on. If you're interested in reading the full patch notes, you can see, see them on Steam uh, in the Steam community or in game by pressing the patch notes option. So this update is available right now. Uh, it should be there on the live game. If you just restart the Steam client, it should download the update. If it doesn't, you can do verify integrity of files if you don't know, know what I'm talking about, that's fine too. It'll update really soon. We're just waiting on Steam to push it down to everybody. Um, but definitely super excited to share Herzl's workshop with everybody. And I really hope to see the community, the modding community grow and uh, see a lot more interesting mods going on. Um, so today we will play the game for sure. I'm happy to answer any questions. I can show how mods work. I've done that on the last few streams, but let's do it again since we're now officially launching the update. Uh, we'll play some of the changes. Let's let's look for some of the Halloween changes. I, I think I haven't played a run on stream in a few weeks at least or a month, and so I want to play one and try to hunt for Bone Dog. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Bone Dog card, it's a rare card in Monster Train that's hard to find, and for a limited time during Halloween we are making it much more common to find. So if you've been trying to master the Bone Dog card, now's the time to come back to Monster Train, play the game, and find Bone Dog and master it. Uh, I forget exactly how much more common it is, but it is far more common. Um, all right. Oh, but before I do that, I have something that I wanted to read for you all. Uh, on our Discord, we've been doing this kind of lore reveal for kind of Herzl as a character in Monster Train. Um, has some importance for sure. So uh, we've been doing some lore behind it. And I'm definitely not the lore master, but I am the person streaming today. So there was a poem that uh, Redbeard on our team wrote that I'm going to read briefly. Um, all right, here it goes. Now that the rail had been set and the covenant cast, the blacksmith could rest, though that peace would not last. This blacksmith, a titan, once long ago, had judged souls as good or as evil, although. He thought ill of this judgment, its wrongness, its spite, and begged the divines to make his life right. Thus, humans were made in this strict moral realm, with souls that our blacksmith gave humans to helm. But the divines quickly left, losing interest in moral, the blacksmith's hubris to blame for this godly quarrel. So the child was split, mother soon to be felled, while the father remains to keep our realm upheld. This blacksmith, our Herzl once titan, forgot the guilt he had felt and the pain he had wrought. He banished his memory, reforged his life. Our Herzl now father, then ended our strife. So, for now, he can rest and ignore his dark past, but destiny grumbles to find him at last. His rail was our peace, his judgment our doom, but his sins on the realm will make hell our tomb. What does that mean for the lore of the Monster Train world? Something to think about. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that. All right, we've got some questions. Poofy Sama says, how was your day? So, or how is your day? How was your day? Well, it's just starting for me. So for me, it's 10 a.m. here in California. So uh, it's good, you know, happy to have the update launched. 
whenever we're launching a new update to the game, it's always, always some stress and tension around making sure that we think we have all the issues addressed and all the bugs fixed and everything. Um, so yeah, yeah, feeling good that it's out and we're definitely ready to address any emergency issues if anything arises, but we're feeling pretty good about this update. All right, Riot for Worst Company. <laughs> Interesting username. I hope nobody ever puts our company name in a username like that. Fingers crossed. All right. Uh, how in depth will we be able to mod? Is it insane? Like create new classes, cards, etc. Uh, it is insane. So Monster Train uses a modding kind of open source framework called Bepin X, which really allows modders to do anything into the game, basically via programming. So I'll admit that it's not like the most user friendly kind of modding system. There's no user interface to do it, basically, like you you have to program. Uh, and we can go over briefly uh, some of the documentation that we have around learning to mod. Um, so we've got some guides, we've got some videos online and so on, and I'll show you where to find those links uh, on the stream today. But uh, yeah, you can basically do anything, which means you can go crazy. And right now, the most popular mod uh, in the kind of public test, and right now as we go live, is understandably a mod called Arcadian, which is a brand new clan made by the community. It's by far the most elaborate uh, mod in, that exists right now, um, and it's really cool. And so we can check that out a bit. I played that a little bit last stream. We can play it again um, and take a look. Uh, but yeah, you can do anything, so it's cool. Chainik says, will you add enemies to logbook? Uh, it's something that's on our mind. Uh, I can't promise that. Uh, it's, it's something that like we've wanted to do even before the game launch, but in terms of priorities, it keeps getting pushed down. It's like, it would be nice. It would be great to have a place to review all those, but we keep believing on the dev team that there are things that are more important to add, uh, that add more value for more players, things like modding. So I, we might is the answer. Basically, I hear you. There's definitely some people who want it, but we, including on the dev team, but we're, we haven't yet committed to doing it yet. All right, Mars Greek God says, wait, isn't this an hour early? Yes, for the stream. We are streaming an hour early today because there are gonna be more streams than normal. Um, so following my stream, uh, I'm gonna be streaming for the next 51 minutes, uh, and then there's gonna be two more streams uh, from our friends at Good Shepherd uh, after this. So we're doing a little bit more today to celebrate the launch of Herzl's workshop. Junkmaster10 asks, is there only six mods by base included? Is there only six mods by base included? I don't know what you mean by that question. Uh, so if you could clarify that, I'd appreciate it. Um, I'd be happy to try to answer it. Is this jhorn847, is this available for all players? Yes, uh, the official mod support is out now uh, on Steam. So I will say though that official mods is only supported on Steam right now. So to our players on GOG or GOG, however you want to call it, uh, you're getting all of the other updates, but our official mod support is linked to the Steam Workshop. There's no Steam Workshop on, on GOG. So uh, unfortunately, if you want official mod support, you've got to get it on Steam right now. Um, you can do mods on the GOG GOG version, uh, just unofficially, but for the official integration, you've got to be on Steam. All right, uh, so yeah, just to show folks what it looks like, if you haven't seen it before, this is what the game looks like right now. So like I said, there is a temporary Halloween event running that does a number of things, and it's mostly Halloween decorations, and then our Bone Dog card, as I said earlier, has been moved to its own Concealed Caverns event and is much more common than it used to be. So that's the main functional change for the Halloween update. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can go to this mod settings button, which is available on the main menu in the lower right corner here now. And this is where you manage your mods and you can find more of them by browsing the workshop. Uh, Jonkmaster10, okay, here's the clarification. There has been six mods already made by the time this update launched. Uh, yeah, there's way more than six actually. So if you click the browse mods button, uh, it takes you to this page on the workshop and you can find this in the Steam client or on the web as well. Um, and it shows all the mods that exist. Right now there's 19 mods. Uh, so some of these were made by the development team as examples. Uh, some were made by the community. We had uh, some folks in our private beta making mods essentially ahead of time that had access uh, so that we could have uh, a variety of mods available at launch. Um, 
so yeah, this is sorted by the most popular. Like I said, it makes sense to me that Arcadian is the most popular. It's an entire clan. It's got custom cards, custom art, new game mechanics. It's got new artifacts. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah, why don't we just look through all the mods? Let's just read them all since we're uh, going public today. Um, all right, Alamaz asks, is it possible to create new enemies or modify the existing ones? Yes, to both. It is possible. Um, and if you want to mod the game, like I said, it's not super user friendly right now. You basically have to do some amount of programming. We've got some tutorials. I will show you where those are um, to help you get up to speed and running. But if you want to add content to the game like cards or enemies and so on, you really are going to want to use the Trainworks modding framework, Trainworks mod tools. This is also made by the modding community. This is not made by the development team. Uh, Arcadian clan requires it and probably many more mods in the future will also require it. It's essentially a programming framework to make it easier to add content to the game. Um, the folks that made it did a lot of the hard work to kind of like figure out how the game works and then they built a much easier to use kind of framework for adding things like cards to the game. Um, so that's what Trainworks is. The reason why it's the number two most popular mod is that Arcadian requires it. So these are kind of linked. Um, and the third one, before we scroll down more, is Restart Battle Button. Uh, this is something that basically adds a new UI button to battle. And if you click it, it does the same thing as going back to the main menu and then resuming your run. So it essentially allows you to restart a battle uh, if you feel like you've made a mistake and so on. Uh, it's not, it kind of feels a bit cheaty to some people, but it's not technically a cheat because you could already do this in the game, uh, just with more clicks. So this just speeds up the ability to click through to those things. Um, all right. Jhorn847, are achievements turned off with mods? Yes. Achievements are, as are quite a few other things. Uh, we'll come back to this page in a minute, but, um, let's see, I've got mods on, right? Yep. So another, a number of things are off. So, uh, oh, I don't have any non-cosmetic mods on. I was going to say, um, Hell Rush is normally blocked, but it's not because this is an important distinction. We've gone over this on other streams, but let's do it again. So there's two types of mods. There are cosmetic only mods, which only do something that's like changing the art or changing some text or even that restart battle button is considered a cosmetic mod because it's not doing something that you can't already do. I've got skip intro FMV installed, which just skips the intro movie. Um, so none of these, these are all cosmetic. They're all considered cosmetic. Nothing is blocked when you only have cosmetic mods. With cosmetic only mods, doesn't matter how many of them you have installed. You can do anything you can normally do. You can get achievements, so on. Arcadian Clan, on the other hand, has this little flag right here. Uh, which means it's a non-cosmetic mod. It changes gameplay. So it tells you some of the things that happen if you enable it. So with this mod enabled, you won't be able to play Hell Rush or submit leaderboard scores. Achievements and single player progression will be locked. Um, and the reason for all of that is uh, basically two, there's two reasons. One is that um, non-cosmetic mods could just be straight up cheats like you have infinite gold or you do a billion damage every time you attack and so on. Uh, so for that reason, we can't let you play multiplayer for sure. And we felt that it kind of devalued things like achievements. Um, so for non-cosmetic mods, a bunch of things are blocked off. The other reason uh, is like, for example, the Arcadian clan is not really like, it's not about cheating or anything like that. It's just a new clan, which is awesome. But, uh, if you were able to join multiplayer with the Arcadian clan enabled, like weird stuff could start happening and people who don't have the mod installed uh, might like the base game would get confused as to what's going on. Um, and there's like a whole can of kind of technical problems associated with some aspects of our game with multiplayer, especially with uh, things like new clans. So there are some caveats surrounding that. Um, all right. G K J Z H G F F J H. Hell of a username. Is all progression locked if non-cosmetic mods are enabled? How would I unlock complete cards of new clans? Um, all progression is not locked. You can still gain experience points. So the rules, there's, there goes my cat. The rules are um, similar to uh, basically when you use mutators in a standard run. So you can gain XP and so on. Uh, the question about things like mastery of Arcadian clan cards 
Honestly, I don't know what happens right now. So there may be more that needs to be done to support that sort of thing. Um, I, I'm not sure what is currently happening. So sorry, I can't give a better answer on that. Um, it's something that we could evolve over time. All right, Junkmaster10, thanks for answering. You're welcome. All right, Seaweezy, Tweezy. Hello, you said making new cards is programming. What about editing existing cards? Is that difficult? Uh, yeah, right now all mods require some amount of programming, but editing existing cards is probably not gonna be very hard, uh, I think, especially if you use Trainworks. Um, you know, if you wanted to like change the damage that an existing card did or something like that. Uh, I think I was able to get Torch to do, I, I, I've made a few mods myself and was messing around with it. I was able to get like the Torch card from the Hellhorn clan to do a million damage with, you know, it's like it still requires a little bit of programming. But we've got tutorials for how to get set up with some of that stuff. And then you just change a number, basically. So it, it's not too hard, though. So I, I definitely admit that it's not as user-friendly as I wish it was. But uh, the, the upside of how our modding works in Monster Train is that it gives modders essentially unlimited power to do anything. Um, so there's pros and cons to kind of how we're, how we're doing it. All right, a question from Twitter. What about Private Hell Rush? Will you be able to have non-cosmetic mods on with that? Um, as of right now, the answer is no. So we decided to block custom challenges when you have non-cosmetic mods enabled because we didn't have enough time basically to fix all the problems with it. And it's for similar reasons, like uh, the base game getting very confused when uh, modded and unmodded games are interacting with each other. It seems like a solvable problem, but we basically don't know what the demand for it is going to be yet. So, and, and we didn't have time to, to do it for the update on the schedule we wanted to launch it on. So let's see, uh, if you really want that, please feel free to send us feedback on any of the normal channels, Discord, Reddit, Twitter, etc. cetera. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. All right, uh, let's look through some of the other mods. So skip intro FMV, I've got that installed. Um, you know, I've played the game thousands of hours, so I've seen that movie enough times. I like the movie, but, you know, I like that FMV, but let's skip it here. So I like that mod. Thank you, Rossum. Um, the mod loader, I'm surprised this isn't more popular because the mod loader is required for mods to function at all. So this is not a very exciting mod. Uh, the game will install this automatically for you when you go into mod settings, but uh, this is required to play anything. Um, my name is Frank. This is a mod I made on stream uh, last week. Basically, it changes the name of the Hornbreaker Prince to Frank. Pretty sure I've got that installed. I can demo that super exciting mod for you real quick. Oh yeah, there's Frank right there, uh, which was some kind of weird community joke that came up months and months ago, but I'm leaving him as Frank. I'm gonna keep that mod installed permanently, I think. Uh, yeah, and so if you wanted to see how I renamed him to Frank, as an example, uh, you can watch a stream that I made last week that should be available uh, in a variety of places. It's on YouTube under our publisher, Good Shepherd Entertainment's uh, YouTube channel. Um, I, you can also find the link from here. So in terms of learning how to make mods, this is the best button to push right here. At the top of Workshop, there's a button that says Monster Train Modding, blah, blah, blah. Learn more. Click Learn More. It takes you to a Steam guide that myself and Genesee wrote at Good Shepherd. Um, talks about playing mods briefly, but then there's a bunch of information about how to make mods. Uh, and there are two video tutorials here. There's one where I make that uh, Frank name changer, which is very basic, but I go over the um, kind of the steps required, all the key steps required to make a mod. Um, and then there's another one from Chronometrics who makes a card. This is one of our community mod advisors, critical to help uh, help us make uh, our modding system. Uh, and he's also the author of the Arcadian Clan mod. And his video here uh, walks through creating an entire card from scratch. So if, which is more interesting, frankly, than my video. So I highly recommend checking his out too. Um, and so then there's a bunch of other steps. There's some like other resources f that are hosted on GitHub, like example mods you can look at, uh, the Trainworks mod tools and so on. So there's a bunch of information. Like I said, it can probably be made more user-friendly over time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's there to get you started basically. All right, let's look at some of the other mods. So this is a new one that showed up very recently. This is called Full Clan. 
by Johnny Bazooka 89 I have not played this one yet, so I'm, I'm interested to try it, but basically it's a mod that makes it possible for both your primary and secondary clan to be the same. Uh, I, I guess I'd be surprised if the game works with that, but I bet it does, because uh, he submitted it to the workshop. Um, that is an important note that I've been wanting to say. Mods can, with unlimited power, mods can also break the game very easily. And uh, if they break the game, we cannot, as the official dev team, we cannot support user-made mods. Let's put it that way. So if you find a bug in a user-made mod, the, what you should do is you should report the bug on Workshop. So I like if there was I found a bug in Full Clan. Let's just say that I did. I'd go in here. There's a comments tab, or sometimes they're shown down here. I'd say blah 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 blah. Doesn't work. Whatever whatever it is. Say your bug there, or if they have something in the instructions here that says they want bug reports on GitHub or something like that, then you could report the bugs that way. Um, but the official Monster Train development team cannot support bug reports, basically, for modded content for user-made mods, because user-made mods can do anything, and we don't even know what they're doing, so there's often no way for us to really help in any way. Um, all right, next mod, life is better with friends. This is another kind of community meme. So uh, this basically takes these two characters. This is the alpha fiend and the demon fiend and renames them alpha friend and demon friend. Uh, so it's kind of similar to it's Frank, it does a, a name rename for these characters. We've got a mod about nothing, which is a, <laughs> it's a, let's read the description here. Looks like a Seinfeld DVD box. It says, experience the droning existence of the passengers aboard the Bone Shaker in this mod about nothing. Uh, so this was uh, made by the development team as an example mod. It's basically an audio mod that adds a live studio audience who claps and does things like that, depending on what's happening, or boos the, uh, the enemies as they come out, uh, and add some slap bass. Slap bass. So that's always good. All right. Money bags. This is another one of the new mods that showed up by Nioxide. Uh, money bags. Let's click it. It's got some nice, nice image there. That's that, that's not content we own. Just uh, make sure that's clear to the lawyers. Like that's somebody else's, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Allows you to start your runs with any amount of gold you wish. By default, this mod will set your starting gold to 420. Of course. <laughs> if you want to set a separate amount, blah, blah, blah. So it's got some instructions here on what to do. Uh, so this is definitely like a cheat. Nothing wrong with that. That's great to have as a user mod, uh, but it should be treated as a non-cosmetic mod and uh, not allow you to play things like Hell Rush uh, or like we're, we're letting you play the daily challenge with non-cosmetic mods, but you can't upload a score. So you can just play it and you can do whatever you want, but your score will not be uploaded at the end. All right, the Stoker Deck Editor by Crazy Jackal. We looked at this one uh, maybe two weeks ago on stream. Uh, this is pretty cool. This allows you to bring up a UI that lets you do almost anything. You can like add any artifact to your current run. You can add any card to your current run. You can put upgrades on cards, like even upgrades that are normally not available to be uh, changed. You know, like you can't normally put one type of upgrade on a spell, let's say. You can just do anything, basically. Um, so you can break the game really easily with it, but it's also really fun to kind of just make mess around and, I don't know, add 10 copies of the same artifact to your run and so on. So it's kind of a crazy one for sure, but uh, it's fun. Um, six card upgrades made by Owen L, who's on the development team. This is uh, this is just an example mod. It just allows you to put six on your unit cards uh, and spell cards instead of the default two. Same thing here, 14 unit limit. Um, I, I love the image that Owen made for this. Very ridiculous looking here, but allows you to have the, the normal limit for total number of units that can be in a single room is seven. This lets you go to 14. All right, All or Nothing Mod by Crazy Jackal. I forgot what this one does. A mod that forces you to pick all card options or none of them. There you go, that's cool. That kind of changes your experience in terms of how you do your decision making. This is kind of like, um, it's like a mutator in a way uh, that would allow you to uh, yeah, kind of change the way you play and the way you think about your decisions. We've got the Mod Uploader. This is 
not really a mod, but it's distributed as a mod. This is what uh, modders use to upload mods for Monster Train to the Steam Workshop. So um, if you're a mod maker and you want to upload your mod to the workshop, you'll need to get this. Uh, for everybody else who just wants to play mods, you can ignore it. Um, all right, we've got a few more. So we've got Spooky Stewards here. Uh, this puts the pumpkin head on Train Stewards as a mod. Note that we're doing this in the base game for the duration of the Halloween event. So you don't need to install this right now because Spooky Stewards is basically in the base game. Um, but once the Halloween event ends, which is set currently for November 3rd, we're going to end it. Um, then we're going to remove the, all the decorations from the base game. And then if you wanted to bring it back for the train stewards, at least you could install that. Uh, we've got shiny stewards. That's my face. I don't know why anyone would want to install that. I don't want to use it either, but uh, it puts the faces of the development team on uh, on train stewards. So um, anyways, it this is an another open source one. All the uh, official dev team created mods are all open source on GitHub. The link to it is in this learn more guide here. Um, so you can find the source code for all those and look at examples. Text Replacer by Redbeard26 allows you to replace any text in the game using a configuration file, basically. So you can make the unit say whatever you want. And Crazy Jackal's got a clan mod as well, the Council Clan, though I believe it's still pretty unstable right now. All right. So yeah, and then if you want to install a mod, basically you click on it, you click subscribe, uh, Steam will download it. You probably have to restart the game at that point because the game it doesn't know that you downloaded that basically. So you quit, Steam will download it, you restart, come back to mod settings, and then it'll be enabled by default. Um, and then you can disable mods if you want. So you can click them on and off. Uh, so you can keep them installed but have them disabled. Whenever you hit this apply changes button, you if you've actually changed something, you have to restart the game uh, based on how our mods work, our modding system works. Like, uh, like if I turn that off and hit, yeah, to apply these changes, you have to quit and restart. It's because of the way the mods are loaded, like right when the game starts up. So we don't have a way to unload them right now. So you have to restart. Um, all right, AmphiDSF says, pretty sure council was unlisted. Whoops, well, I just showed an unlisted mod because I've got admin access. There you go. Secret mods shown on stream. We've got everything here. <laughs> all right, so let's play a run. Um, Yes, I want to start a new run. So we're going to go with Frank, just because I want to have Frank on screen as much as possible. And for our allied clan, we're going to go Umbra, uh, because there are some additional Halloween decorations, or there's at least one that's specific to the Umbra clan that I want to show. And we'll play at just Covenant 1, and I am going to be hunting for Bone Dog. So like I said, Bone Dog is much more common of a card now. It's in his own event. So let's fingers crossed. This is not pre-planned. I have no idea if I'm going to get Bone Dog, but let's hope that we do. Um, but before that, Zio Zen asks, was it difficult to integrate Steam Workshop? Uh, no, it wasn't. So the Steam made it relatively easy to do things like uh, querying what mods a user has installed and so on and so forth. Uh, but we definitely took like a kind of somewhat unusual approach uh, basing our modding framework on the BepinX project, which is an open source framework for making mods for Unity games. Um, there, are, there are some other games out there uh, that use that as kind of like the primary modding framework, like Risk of Rain 2 is one of them, I think. Um, but uh, this is what we're using and it, it allowed us to like give modders ultimate power, but it does mean to mod the game. You do have to program right now. There's no like GUI editing tool to make a card. Somebody could make that though. Somebody could make a mod and then the mod is a tool to edit your own card and set it up. So it's possible that modders can build tools on top of like the kind of somewhat low level framework that exists right now. All right, Fly Penguin says, wow, marks never want to run. Yeah, it's terrible, pathetic, very sad. All right, what do we have today? Maybe we can win this one, we've got 30 minutes. So we again are playing Hellhorn and Umbra. What do we get? We got Daedalus, Double Barrel, we got Arcus, and we got Seraph the Chaste. Buff and debuff. Cleansing, cleansing. So I gotta keep that in mind. We started with Inflame, which gives us Rage, which is not gonna be good against Seraph the Chaste. Like probably many players, I lose runs when I forget to pay attention to which Seraph I'm gonna be facing. So uh, I'm gonna try to remember this time. 
Yeah, just even recently, I played a run where I like was getting all kinds of synergy on Rage. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be so awesome. And then like at ring six, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I forgot that it was Seraph the Chase. So that, that's why we show this to you at the beginning. It's also up here, so you can remind yourself. All right, let's go. Okay, just reviewing my deck real quick. Cool. Oh, reviewing my deck, got Frank, it's critical. Champions Frank, what do we get? Tampered Talisman is Scorched Steel. Do we want armor or magic power? So magic power will be good with Entumbara Assault and Torch. Scorched Steel with armor, if we're making a bunch of morsels, it definitely gives you some free additional blocking, especially in the early game, but eh, let's go. Let's go magic power for fun. All right. Okay, which Frank do we want here? We want Slay Frank or do we want Multi-Strike Frank? I don't know, maybe because we're playing Umbras, our allied clan will get some buffs from our morsels, so let's go Brawler. Okay. All right, so we can see one of the other mods that I have installed that I talked about earlier. I've got the restart battle button in the lower right corner, so I'll click that real quick just so you can see what happens. So I'll deploy some units. If you haven't seen the Halloween update, there's both pumpkins and so on in the rooms of the train. We've got a pumpkin-headed train steward and so on. So I'll cast some cards, I'll play some characters and blah, blah, blah. Then I'm like, hey, I misclicked. Let's hit restart battle. Now we're back at the beginning of the battle. The game is completely deterministic, so the cards you get will be exactly the same. When I cast Shade Splitter, it'll be the same card that comes out of it and so on. Um, so, like I said, this was already possible basically by using this menu, go back to main menu, resume your run. It was just more clicks. Um, and some people have different perspectives as to whether or not the fact that it works this way is good or bad, but it is what it is at this point. Uh, and we're not planning to change that. So, all right. Let us kill some of these guys. All right, I'm gonna go in ultra speed just to see. There's probably no chance I'm actually gonna finish a run, but let's see, let's see what happens. Oh, and there is one of our Halloween decorations I was looking for. The rubble morsel is now holding candy corn, which I think looks awesome. There he is. Hey, look at that cute little guy with his candy corn. What did we get here? I guess we might as well play all these guys. Let's rage up Frank. All right, looking good. Hmm. Do I already have Hidden Passage? I do, all right, I'll take Fortify. Zen, another question, kind of out of the loop on this game and the dev team, what is, was, is your role on the team? Uh, so I am the CEO of Shiny Shoe. We're a team of 14 people in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, on Monster Train. Really, my main job is like the running the production, so like organizing the schedule and so on, um, and helping prioritize what we're working on. Uh, but since we're, you know, we're not a tiny team, but we're like a mid-sized team, uh, but still a smaller team. You know, I also did a little bit of programming on the project and so on too. So. Um, most people wear a lot of hats, a little bit of marketing stuff, all sorts of different things. Um, that's how it goes with smaller game dev teams. All right, Lord Garthon asks question, considering it's a Halloween update, are there other kinds of monsters in this train? That's a great question. Let's think, 
Let's think about that. What kind of monsters are in this train? I think my favorite question when this comes up is, are you one of the monsters in Monster Train? Who are you in the world of Monster Train? Deep thoughts. All right, <laughs> back to the run. Okay, what do we want here? Space Prism's always handy with Umber Runs. Prismal Dust, a little damage shield, can go a long way. Immortal Trade, could be good, could be good. Could be good on Frank. Lifesteal 4 with Multi-Strike. If we can keep him alive, though. He needs, his base health's a bit low. It's gonna, he might die before we're able to make use of that. <clears throat> Let's go for it. And then see if we can get some somebody to have higher health to act as maybe a blocker. All right, do we want an Umbra unit or a Hellhorn unit? Let me think. I don't really... Yeah, spell upgrades, we could get something interesting. Let's go with Umbra. I haven't, I haven't played Umbra in a while, actually. All right. Crucible Collector could get an insane amount of lifesteal going out of control with our Immortal Trade, so let's try that. Lord Garthod, if you were wearing a lot of hats, is one of them the monster hat? You know, I don't have a good monster hat. That would be a good one to get. <laughs> All right. Do we want magic power on something? Minus one ember. Minus one ember on inflame could be nice. However, don't forget, Mark. I'm trying to remind myself, we're facing Seraph the Chaste at the end of this run, which will cleanse our rage off. But it would be good for the rest of the run leading up to that. And it's a pretty cheap upgrade, so let's just go ahead and do that. All right. Permafrost or magic power? I mean, we could go for even more magic power in one of our Entumbra Assaults that would make it scale a bit better into the mid-game. I mean, six damage already, though? That kills a lot of the lower health units, even in the late game, I think, directly, so it may not be worth it. I think most, like, low health characters are already killed by that, so I don't think, because we took the Tempered Talisman, so I actually don't think that's necessary. We want Permafrost on anything. Is there anything where we would want to, like, not necessarily cast it? I mean, maybe it would be good on Immortal Trade? Because then we could... Do, are, we, are we going to want to cast this every single time it comes up? Maybe not, because of the Ember Drain element. So by using Permafrost, we can decide when we want to cast it. It'll just sit in our hand. Let's do it. All right, let's give that a shot. All right, let's 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 just keep taking trials. Cricket says, if you make a mod that adds a mutator, would that be considered a non-cosmetic change? Yes, uh, because you, I think so. I mean, it's up to the mod author basically to say if it's cosmetic or non-cosmetic, but like I said, really what we're trying to avoid is we don't want people like cheating in multiplayer against the base game players. So, and we don't want weird bugs coming up with like multiplayer interactions with some people who have mods and some people who don't. Um, did I turn my game sound off? It's possible that I did. Um, <clears throat> let me turn that up real quick. Yes. Uh, no, I did not turn my game sound off. It's maybe just low. Say what you think. Um, yeah, anyway, so jump back to your question. Uh, the mutator thing, it probably would need to be non-cosmetic. Non um, but you can play with it in single player without any issues whatsoever. Jmax135, why do you take up five spaces? Uh, well, you know, you haven't seen you haven't seen my belly down here, you know? It's a little big. That's what my daughter tells me all the time. Daddy, you have a big belly. So uh, it's got to work on that. Maybe if I can uh, lose some weight, we can go down to four or three. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right, Lord Garthon, how, why and how did you guys come up with this kind of theme? Uh, interesting question. I, I'm pretty sure like at some point we've answered that before, but um, basically, ooh, I'll do that. Um, yeah, I mean, Monster Train's kind of a weird and crazy sort of theme, and essentially, like, 
Very early on, we had a prototype of the gameplay that we liked, but it had no real theme. It was like some, we used some generic kind of pixel art dungeon pack that we just bought online um, as a kind of like initial uh, thing to test with. Um, and we wanted to find something that we felt uh, would, I don't know, really be interesting and unusual. Uh, and so that's why we ultimately went with this kind of like crazy train in hell concept was among many ideas that were pitched at that time. We thought this would be a pretty interesting one. All right. I don't want my crucible collector to die here. So we need to do something. Um, what are we going to do? We could play the entumber morsel. We could hidden passage somebody. We could do both of those things. If we chump block, he'll live, right? Yeah. All right, let's just do that. Maybe we'll just chump there, too. Let's bring in another Shade Splitter. I scrolled up because I don't want this guy to get an encant trigger. There's our cute little guy again. All right, uh, CML 100, are there any plans for modded challenges in the future where the creator of a custom challenge could set a mod list? I think that's a cool idea. So as of right now, we are not actively working on that, but if it's something you'd really like to see, I mean, the fact that you're asking for it probably means you'd like to see it. Uh, feel free to give feedback on Discord, Reddit, Twitter, etc. all the normal places where we um, have the kind of monster train community and people talking. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we like to take player feedback, so if there's a high demand for that, then we will definitely deeply consider it. All right, let's get rid of these two guys. Uh, let's bring in another train steward, another spooky steward. Uh, I don't think I want a hidden passage. All right, here we go. Okay, well, there's our immortal trade. Let's definitely get rid of this guy. Let's immortal trade him. Looking good. Just for fun, let's do that. You have to be careful. Those just for fun spell casts uh, can get you into trouble. And I think there's like, I don't know. So I've seen a meme on Reddit where somebody's like, the preview shows that they're going to beat the boss. And then they just want to cast an extra spell just because, eh, like, just it's fun to cast spells. It's fun just to click through them. And then you end up casting something that causes it to no longer be the case that you're going to kill the boss. That has happened to me before. So you got to be careful. Yeah, I think... Uh, Sometimes it's the smartest idea just to immediately hit end turn if you know that you're going to win the battle, just so you don't run into one of those snafus. Um, all right, do we want any of these? Horn break, piercing with eight damages. That's pretty nice, actually. Let's go with that. that that'll help mitigate some uh, armor-based enemies and so on if we end up taking a trial that has that. Do I want space prism? Yeah, let's go for it. Couldn't hurt. We want any of these guys now. I don't know if I do. I mean, Alloyed Construct could be all right. We do have Entum Entumbra Assault, which helps us get more morsels faster. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see if we can make them work. We need to purge. We need to get some, rid of some of these stewards. All right. I definitely don't think I want another unit, but I also don't need health. What would I duplicate if I was going to duplicate something at this point? Could duplicate Immortal Trade. Could duplicate Space Prism. I don't have any upgrades on either of these guys, so that's not that juicy. Duplicating in Flame seems... Good, but also <laughs> we're facing Clint Seraph. I, I keep falling into the trap. It's like I just want to just want to go rage every time I have the uh, the Clint Seraph. Um, I don't want a banner. Do I want to upgrade anything spell wise? I don't know. Not not really. I mean, removing consume off of Space Prison might be interesting. Uh, I'm stuck. Can't decide what to do. All right, let's just go this way. Um, let's duplicate. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I 
Tempt, kind of tempted to duplicate a mortal tray. Then we can just have two of them sitting in our hand at all times, and then whenever the boss comes out, we can just dump them on our front line, keep them alive. Eh, let's just do it. What the hell? Let's see how good this card is. I remember, uh, I believe it's AmphiDSF saying in our private beta, one of our private beta players, that that card is awesome. So let's just go for it. Yolo. All right, are we gonna get Bone Dog in our first Concealed Caverns? No. <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, like I said, Bone Dog has his own event now, so you will literally see the Bone Dog sitting here with some extra Halloween decorations for the, uh, the event here. And look at this. Maybe we should have come here before using the uh, copy thing. We can copy a card. You know, there's no way I'm finishing this run. Let's just YOLO. Full YOLO. We're copping Immortal Trade eight time, five times, excuse me. Boom. All right, baby. We will never want for lifesteal. Exactly. What if we had seven immortal trades? I did it before I even saw your message. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Daedalus. As long as we don't get killed by double barrel, as long as we don't die from something like that, we should have so much lifesteal, it'll be ridiculous. Alloyed Construct will do nicely with some lifesteal. All right, let's do it like this. Let's make sure we can keep him alive, though. All right, well, so he'd take 20 damage there, but he could completely heal it back immediately if we're willing to eat the fact that we're going to have Ember Drain on the next turn. So I'm actually thinking let's not cast that right now. We can just kill this thing with our direct damage spells. We could just Hidden Passage it into the Pyre. That way we don't have to use this on him. We could use it on something else. Eh. Just kidding. That would not be a good idea. All right. Uh, oh, wait. He wouldn't have any fuel, actually, so uh, it would not be good to rely on Immortal Trade right there. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. What to do? I definitely want to start getting some amount of life steal on this guy because he needs to stay alive. Tushar Zero says, I feel like if there's a Frank, there should also be an Ernest. Who is Ernest from? That's got to be from something, and I don't recognize it, so you guys can trash me for not knowing the reference. <laughs> All right, we definitely need to try to make sure that our buddy here, Crucible Collector, stays alive, so it looks like we're going to be good on that. Should we give him an immortal trade now? Yeah, what the hell? Why not? We've got so many of them. There we go. Should we give him one? Probably not, because then we'll have no ember at all, for sure. <clears throat> and I threw that train steward down there just because I don't care about him. Just let him die. All right. He's looking good. He's looking good. We still do have Ember Train 1, or Ember Drain, Ember Train. <laughs> Train's in my mind. Uh, eh, sure, let's give him some armor. Let's see. Let's give Frank some of this, I think, I want to do. If we do another Immortal Trade, we will have no Ember next turn, which would not be good. Of course, now we have no fuel on this guy, so also not good. And we don't have any way to accelerate him to eat, so I think he is toast. Now, if I really wanted to, I could click this modded restart battle button and be like, eh, I need to redo this. But we've only got 10 minutes, so we'll just go. All right. Let us get some more morsels. All right, we'll put him on this guy. Let's get rid of this guy. Is it time to just put five Immortal Trades on Crucible Collector? It might be. Let's at least give him one. <laughs> we can always do it next turn. <clears throat> I 
think I'll just do Shade Splitter as my one ember here. All right. Do, do, do. Let's give Frank one. Why not? There you go, Frank. All right, we've got this guy with an insane number of them. Let's give him another one. Yeah, what the hell? I think we're good. I think we're good here. <sighs> Tushar Zero says, A Sam Jackson joke from the Long Kiss Goodnight. I am not familiar with that. I will have to check that out afterwards. <laughs> All right. One Horm's Tome. So we can't cast that right now. We don't have enough Ember. And we're going hard on Ember Drain, so probably not the best. Probably X cards and High Ember, probably all of them bad with our current strategy, so let's just skip that. Uh, this, the Morsel Spike maybe would have been okay with Allied Construct, because we could get him fuel faster, but... Yeah, oh well. I already hit skip. Uh, do do Morsel Maker. Morsel Maker would be really nice to combine also with Allied Construct, because he's going to get free fuel, so let's do him. Do do I want more Ember? I mean, if we took Fell's Remorse, then at least when we have only one Immortal Trade active on the turn after, we would still have two Ember instead of one, which would make sure that we could cast things like Morsel Maker, uh, which we might not otherwise be able to cast. I don't feel like we need card draw right now. Capacity is always nice, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Ember. Might seem like a weird choice, but I just want to make sure we've got at least two Ember for most of the, the times we're going through. So, oh, I do want to purge. Decisions, decisions. That's what makes games like this good. Interesting decisions. I, I always want an artifact, and I really want to purge. I get gold. I don't really want another unit. I do want to go to the merchant for upgrading units, however. Getting... <sighs> I was going to say large stone would be nice on Crucible Collector, but with our capacity problems, that might not be good. Um, all right, I'll go this way just because I want to see what's going on over here. I don't think there's any way. Yeah, we already have both of those cards. Definitely don't want that. Let's see what we got. So we did speak of the devil. We got large stone as an option here. So, you know, I'm like tempted to put it on this guy because that would give us a lot more health here to work with for our lifesteal. Uh, but... If we only have five capacity in the room and Frank's in there too, then we will not be able to put any morsels in there without casting our um, space prism, which we, we can set up that combo, but it just makes it a little bit harder to get. We could do it on the alloyed construct. If we can get morsel maker in the same room with him, then, you know, even with the increased capacity there, we're still good. So... I... Or we could just put it on Crucible Collector, put Crucible Collector with Morsel Maker, put Frank with Alloyed Construct, and just kind of like make make this our champion, kind of. Let's do that. You know, he's going to be life stealing. He needs a ridiculous amount of life to survive some rounds, so let's just give him life. Damage Shield 3. Should we throw that on Alloyed Construct? It'd give us like a little bit more time to set him up so that he doesn't die right away. Yeah, what the hell? We're not gonna finish this run anyway, so. All right, let's use up some gold. Let's get rid of uh, some train stewards. Train steward, what is your purpose in life? To get purged out of the deck. Hmm. Plus 10 attack on Slay. That could be good. If he's got like a good frontline blocker to keep him alive. Sure, let's go for it. Mixing the paths. Non-boss enemy units get multi-strike. Always very dangerous. Plus we've got the haste enchanter. Even more dangerous. Always the trial to take an artifact is tempting. Since we're not going to finish this run anyways. What the hell, let's go for it. See what happens. Okay, we did not get our new tank guy here, so maybe we can get him on the next uh, next one around. So we can, if we place the Allied Construct here, we're going to lose all of his stacks. So let's put him up here, I guess. Um, 
We'll put Frank here. We'll kill this guy. Because we need to give him some fuel. I mean, we might as well torch him. Okay. All right, interesting. Okay, so we got the Morsel Maker. We still have not drawn our other dude. So question, should I put Morsel Maker in the room here or should I wait for our other guy? I think I'll just play him. Try to combo here. So what else do we want to do? Let's kill this guy so we get buy some more time. Got even more Morsels. Just play them and get them out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, here's our buddy. Of course, now we have no morsels to play, unfortunately. We can just get rid of this train steward on this turn. Two shards zero. Ah, oh, come on, man. With the right artifact, a large stone and battle stone on a train steward is a sub champion. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. Not quite ready to unload our immortal traits yet. <laughs> Let's let him just keep filling up our deck. This is what makes Monster Train fun. Ridiculous stuff like this. How many? We have got five right now. It's a good number. There we go. Can sack this guy. I think we got two waves remaining until the boss comes, but... It's probably about time just to start unloading these, so let's just go ahead and do it. There we go. We will not be casting anything else the rest of this battle. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we, well, we can cast more modal traits, though, of course. Yeah, why not? There we go. Did get some guys up here, but ah, that's acceptable amount of pirate damage. All right, and he's dead. <laughs> Life steal good. Life steal good. Wonder how many rounds of combat this is going to be though, because this guy's attack isn't particularly high. Do do do. Are we going to lose? No, we almost lose all of our life steal. Hey, when a strategy works, it works teeth of gold. All right, I think that's going to be it for me. Uh, we've got two more streams from our friends at Good Shepherd coming after this. Today, our Herzl's Workshop free update was launched on Steam and GOG GOG. Uh, it adds official mod support, a limited time Halloween event, and a number of balance tweaks. So thank you for joining me today for the stream. I hope you'll enjoy the update. As always, if you have feedback, want to talk to us more, you can join us on Discord at Monster Train or Discord.gg forward slash Monster Train. Sorry about that. Uh, on Reddit at I think it's r slash Monster Train. Pretty sure. Uh, and on Twitter uh, is the official Monster Train account, whose name I've forgotten, but I'm pretty sure it's also something like Monster Train or the Monster Train. You'll be able to find it if you want to. All right. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.